Next topic under fluid statics uh, is hydrostatic forces on submerged plane surfaces. Now, at the end of this session, you guys are expected to one, know how to calculate the forces and moments exerted by a fluid at rest on plane submerged surfaces, meaning uh, a flat flat plane okay and next would be be able to know that there are different methods to use in calculating the forces and moments exerted by a fluid at rest on a submerged plane so for now planar okay smooth uh one it's more like two dimension but for next topic would be curved surfaces Okay, so if you can example, uh, see a dam, usually the dam is kind of look like this one, right? So this is a plane, so one face. But uh, for curved surfaces, so hemispherical, right? Kind of surfaces, okay? Inclined, inclined. So for plane, straight down okay now fluid statics as we all know deal with problems associated with fluids at rest so when you say fluid it can be liquid or gas so for our topic since we talk about hydrostatic it means that the fluid that we are considering is liquid but if we are to consider our fluid to be gas we call that aerostatic but for this topic will focus on hydrostatic. Now, in order for our fluid to be in static condition, these are the conditions. And now, first, it must only involve gravitational acceleration and nothing more. Okay, forces exerted on a surface by a fluid at rest is normal to the surface at the point of contact. So, in other words, your uh, force is perpendicular to your surface, right? So no matter what orientation is your uh, surface is, say inclined, so it must be perpendicular, going this one, oh, perpendicular. Next, the variation of pressure is due only to the weight of the fluid. Pressure is equal to gamma H, and we know gamma is equal to rho G, H specific weight is rho g. Next, no relative motion, therefore, no shear forces acting parallel to the surface. That hence the name static, no motion at all. Okay, so as I have said, pressure is equal to gamma h, and we know gamma is rho g, right? Wait, let me write it here. So for our first illustration, our first figure, that is the pressure distribution and the resultant hydrostatic force on the bottom of an open tank, right? And for our second illustration, it is the pressure distribution on the ends of an open tank. So uh, later on, we will be encountering the term center of pressure i know that we are very much familiar with centroid which is at the the center of gravity of any regular or any shape right so let us say if you can observe uh letter a this is a uniform load right uh going down so it's kind of a rectangular loading in a rectangle rectangular loading your centroid or your resultant force acts at the very center, right? And we know the center of gravity is just that the uh it is a moment summation. Uh the reason why yeah is a moment summation wherein uh your moment summation is equal to zero meaning all of the forces from right and left from your center of gravity cancels out. Hence the moment summation is zero. So later on like I said we will be encountering center of pressure. Well, anyway, uh, for A, whatever is the 
pressure at the very bottom that is uniform over that area, right? Unlike at our letter B, wherein our loading is uniformly varying, hence the triangular loading, right? Wherein at the very uh, at the free surface the pressure is zero, meaning the gauge pressure is zero, and then as we go along downward, our pressure increases due to the weight of our fluid, right, over a certain column of that same fluid. So if we want to find the resultant of our uh, force, uh, no, the resultant of our fluid, what we can do is we will take a differential area over our, so let us say this is our irregular, uh, shape right it is submerged at the very uh, not at the bottom but somewhere in between submerged right we take a differential area and of course that differential area is subjected to a certain pressure right and our pressure is constant because you just have to know the height and the quality and the property of your uh of your fluid, so rho g h, right? If you know the height, then you can calculate your pressure. So since you have, you are taking a differential area multiplied by your pressure, what you will get is a differential force, right? D f. And p is equal to rho g h or gamma h. So you can substitute that here in your on our calculation df is equal, will become now rho g h d a okay rho g is gamma now for our h that is the height the vertical height from the free surface to the point we where we are taking our differential area right hence this one here okay now if you can observe we are using uh, angle with respect from the uh, free surface, right? It's from here to here. And if this is theta, that is sine, right? Opposite to angle theta. Sine, uh, sine h is equal, uh, no, uh, our hypotenuse is y, so sine theta is our opposite, that's h, over the distance from our point O to our differential area, which is our y. So y, that is why h is equal to y sine theta. Now, what does this mean? This is useful for an uh, inclined, but for vertical, mm, just like this one, uh, for this example, take note that it's straight going down, our theta here, is equal to 90 degrees, right? And sine 90 degrees, sine 90 degrees is equal to 1. So therefore, any number multiplied to our 1, which is the value of our sine, sine 90, is the number. So again, what we're doing is just for uh, representation. Anyway, knowing that... Uh, Therefore, if we want to find for the resultant force, this is uh, the individual force, df, over your differential area. If we want to find the resultant force, so it means we have to take the, uh, many differential areas and find the, all the differential forces, right? So maybe take da here, da here, da here. So therefore, this, in order for us to find for the resultant, we have to simply sum all of those differential forces. And since we already had our background in integral calculus, what that means is that we are simply going to integrate the value of our df, which is gamma times quantity y sine theta d theta over the entire area. That is why the integral of gamma y sine theta d theta over the entire area. And we know that sine theta and our gamma, since our gamma is the property of our liquid, and sine theta is just the orientation, 
if it is vertical, that is simply sine 90, which is 1. So these two are uh, constant. Okay? And if you can, what we are left is in, uh, the integral of y dA. Now, in our moment of inertia topic in statics of rigid bodies, this is what we call the first moment of area, which has an equivalent value that is the y-coordinate of our centroid. And that is our y-coordinate of our centroid is given y sub c is equal to the first moment of area, which is the integral of y dA over the entire area divided by that area. So that is why 1 over area times the integral of y dA. And knowing that, if f sub r is gamma sine theta times the first moment of inertia, and we know that the first moment of inertia has an equivalent value, which is if we multiply a here, so this becomes a y sub c is equal to the integral of y dA over the entire area, then our resultant force can be calculated as gamma times a times y sub c sine theta. Okay, and as we all know, if we go back here, if uh, you can observe y sub c sine theta in our derivation, right? So if in terms of a vertical component, if this is y sub c sine theta, it must mean that opposite to our angle theta, there must be a vertical height that is equivalent to y sub c sine theta that is equal to c, which is this one. And that is the vertical height corresponding to our centroid. So, wherein h sub c is equal to y sub c sine theta is the vertical distance of the centroid from the free surface of the liquid. Now again, like I always say, if our uh, structure is not inclined to a certain degree with respect to our, uh, na our free surface and rather straight down, your h sub c will be equivalent to y sub c because your sine theta will be sine 90 degrees and sine 90 degrees is equal to 1. Okay. Now, so f sub r is equal to gamma. I'll just uh, re 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 rewrite it. Is equal to gamma h sub c a wherein f sub r is the resultant force on the plate, right? while gamma is the specific weight of the liquid, H sub C is the depth of the centroid of the submerged area. So again, it is the centroid of your submerged area, and A is the submerged area of the plate. So in summary, the magnitude of the resultant force on the plate is the product of the pressure acting at the plate's centroid y h sub c and the area a of the plate okay now if we already have our magnitude of our resultant force what we need to do next is to find its location meaning where our f sub r acts now although what we have we what we are considering here is the height of our centroid but intuitively, dili na siya by case. Okay, so let us have, before we proceed with our calculations of the resultant, allocation of the resultant force, so take this for example. If you have, let's say, a bar here, and it is it carries a uniformly distributed load, which is a rectangular loading, di ba? So, rectangle... Okay, and it has a length of, let us say, 2 meters. Let us call this point A and point B. 
if our uniformly distributed loading has a value of 10 newton per meter here, that also means this, oh, this also has 10 newton per meter. Okay. And our uh, resultant force acts at the centroid, right? It acts at the centroid, which is is equivalent to the area that is 10 newton meter times the length of our uh, distributed loading, which is 2 meters. So that's 10 newton per meter times 2 meter is 20. That is our resultant. So again, our like I said a while ago, that center of gravity centroids is at a certain point where the forces that acts to the left of that point, to the left, and to the right, cancels out. Okay, so if, for example, the 10 Newton per meter, it has a 10, we just have to cut it here. Let us say, tagtunga tunga sila, so 1 meter each. So, nasa, nakay 10 Newton meter sa left, and diri po sa side na po kay 10 Newton. newton. So, if you take moment about this point, nakai counter a uh, counterclockwise moment nga 10 newton meet, newton times its perpendicular distance from your center, and then nabugay 10 newton meter nga clockwise mo counter up anas yeah. So like I said, si centroid is the point wherein if you do moment summation, it will be equal to zero. Meaning all the forces to your left or right of your centroid is it cancels out so it, moment summation is zero now the next question would be what will happen if the uh the forces in our right to the right of our initial centroid is much greater than the force that acts at our left so a very good example and that would be let us just have this one uh, our 10 newton meter but rather than have it uh, uniformly distributed we'll have it uniformly varying meaning kanang uh, triangular loading okay so this time initially when this was a rectangular loading what happened your centroid is at 1 meter from A right up uh, 1 meter uh, yeah a one meter, yeah. But what happens now if it become a a triangular loading? Its centroid becomes two thirds from A, right from the tip, which is two thirds times two. That is from here to here. That is four thirds, and two over three. There is a side. So what you guys, uh, what we guys have observed is that if um uh force distribution is kind of imbalance, what happened is para ma balance na siya, your centroid mo move na siya towards kung asa to ang na greater na force being applied. Okay, so there is a ten uh, at the very uh, at point B, which is the height of our triangle, let us say, nakai 10 newton dira. But at point A, 10 newton rabal gihapon, which is dili na. Right? Zero na ni siya during a part. So there is kind of imbalance. Mauna siya, that is why our, like I said, ang century now becomes ni paduol siya kung asa ang greater nga force applied. Okay. Having known that, if ato na siyang ipatindog no, patindogon. Let us have this as. Okay. So this becomes now our uniformly varying load. Na 10 newton meter gihapon ang maximum. 10 newton meter. And ang height ra gihapon niya is 2 meters. Okay. So uh, then I will redraw the color red. Color red for the triangular loading. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. So, unlike the normal distribution loading we have in we had in our statics, pressure on the other hand, book at rajud kayo to big. That is why intuitively, your center of pressure acts much lower than your center of gravity of any uh regular uh regular shape okay so let us say if later on as we move on with our discussion sa how to calculate the center of gravity i ah, know the center of pressure if your uh if only like i said if only the amount of pressure of your liquid exerted at the top here, which is this is our A and this is our B, is somewhat the same as the amount of pressure applied at B, then our center of pressure will be equal to the center of gravity or which at, at the centroid. But that is not the case for our hydrostatic forces. Because we have already established that as we increase our pressure, there is as we go deeper, as we increase our depth, there is a corresponding increase in our pressure. And we are not just talking about dinagmaing increase. We are talking about dagko jud kaya increase sa tuang pressure, right? Now, if nakasa mga shallower, dagko makita gini mga nagi big difference sa let us say nga ni nga ni kalalumno nagu siya dakong difference sa pressure at A o pressure at B so dako jud kayo nga nga what do you call that pressure pressure difference and knowing that like based on this uh, analogy that our center which is where our point nga mag cancel out ang mga forces over that specific specified area dito gud siya mo pa duol pag ayo sa kung asa ang dako kayo nga applying a force so that is why if you did some advanced reading your center of pressure is much lower than your center of gravity sa imuha nga regular shape okay so i hope that is clear and although i said nga nga si tawag ani nga ang imo center of pressure is is much lower than your center of gravity that is only if the amount of pressure applied at the very top which is for this illustration can pressure at a has a huge difference which is a uh, huge difference with the pressure applied at the lower end, which is at point B. Now, if daka sa pinak elalum na let us say at the Mariana Trench na judyang level, ang difference of pressure sa duha, even though two meters na siya, medyo gamay na lang jud kayo. So when I say gamay na kay ang pressure difference over that area, ang amount of pressure applied at A is somewhat the same na lang sa pressure applied at point B. So if again, if wala kayo klarong difference sa pressure between the two, your center of pressure will be at your, the will act at the center of gravity. Pero for shallower uh, objects such as kanang sa dam, ing ana, ang amount of pressure exerted at the very bottom compared to the free surface is dako kaayo. So that is why bahala pa rin siya straight down para na imo vertical lang yun imong plane. And then, of course, this is a kind of rectangular. So mayroon dyan ka ang centroid and na is one half lang aning length. So let us say this overall length is B. One half B, one half B. But again, a difference of pressure is dako kaayo and na yun siya ng level Right? So, your center of pressure acts much lower than this. Let us say na dito ang center of pressure. Okay. Uh, wait for a while.
Okay, so wait, uh, let me. Okay, so that is why we have what we call center of pressure. And in order for us to calculate our center of pressure, meaning mathematically, what we did is do ano lang man, ano, through analysis, through analogy, through the concepts that we have learned so far. So mathematically, we can represent. So we have uh, we represent our center of pressure as we what we are going to do is we like I said, uh, we do moment summation, and the resultant of our uh moment summation about the y. Okay, is y sub p. We assume that our uh, resultant and uh, yeah resultant force acts at our center of pressure y sub p times f sub r is equal to, so of course, the integral of our uh, df times y, right? And since f sub r is equal to y sine theta times y sub c a, right? And if you take the differential, that is y times a gamma times y sine theta times dA, right? We did that in the previous slide. So we substitute the, all of our values here. And this becomes y sub b times y a gamma sine theta times y sub c a close bracket is equal to the integral of y times gamma times y sine theta d theta. And we know that gamma and sine theta is a constant. We have two y's in the right-hand side of our equation. So we have this y and this y. and Gamma and sine theta is constant. So we factor out gamma sine theta and it becomes y squared dA, which is then we divide both sides. Cancel this one. Cancel. So we are only left with y sub p, y sub c. A, uh, y is our center of pressure, y sub c is our center of gravity times the area of our plate is equal to the integral of y squared dA. And y squared dA is what we call the area moment of inertia or the second moment of area. And that is equivalent to I sub x. And we simplify that, that is y sub b, y sub c. A is equal to y sub x. And in order for us to calculate y sub p, we divide both sides by y sub c a. So we are left with y sub x over y sub c a. Now, of course, that is the location of our uh, center of pressure measured from the uh, centroid. So it means by virtue of parallel axis theorem, our center of pressure is equal to the uh, the centroid y sub c plus our calculated value which is y sub x over y sub c a where y sub b is the distance along the plate to the center of pressure now this is let us say your structure is just this uh, has a length of, let us say, 2 meters, okay? And it is submerged, that is ang too big. And this is, uh, let us say, 2 meters ang, ah, no, let us have 3 meters ang gilalmon. So, y sub p, if the, at the center, mo ni ang atong y sub c, na diri ubos gamay ang atong ang y sub p, now, y sub p, the distance along the plate to the center of pressure. y sub c, the distance along the plate to the centroid of the submerged area. And a, the submerged area. Uh, y, y sub x is the moment of inertia of the submerged area about the centroidal axis. And a is the submerged area of the plate. So don't worry, we will have a series of examples for this one. And that is for the y component for the x component simply that is x sub p is equal to x sub c plus i 
sub x y over y sub c a. Now x sub b is the location of the center of pressure. X sub c y sub c is the coordinate distance along the centroid of the submerged area. I sub x y is the product of inertia of the submerged area relative to the centroidal axis, and A is the submerged area of the plate. Now, for a symmetrical plate, what does it mean? Let us say for regular shape, uh, regular shape plates or figures, so let us say circle, square, triangular, if we take our y-axis at these shapes, the x component is nagudiri sa tungaan, right? Nagudiri sa tungaan. Although mo vary ang y. Ano ang y? Mo vary ang y. Yan. Pero si x, nagud siya sa tungaan. So let us say, if this is our if circular, kung center niya, which is the length of our radius, Kani is one half of our uh, one side. And for our triangle is katunga po siya sa ato ang base. So for symmetrical plates na sila. And for those kind of plates, I sub XY is zero. And the center of pressure is zero. Meaning zero relative to the X axis. Or relative to kung asa ang mga reference point. Unlike for our Y, we're in... We measure our uh, center of pressure from the free surface. Si X is along our uh, plate lang man. So this, if this is, like I said, if this is our plate, along this side, padulong dira, ang tuasa ang tungaan. Okay? So that is why X sub P is zero. Now, uh, important points to remember. A liquid creates a pressure loading that acts perpendicular to a submerged surface. And since the liquid is assumed to be incompressible, then the pressure intensive intensity increases linearly with depth provided with the formula gamma H. Now, the resultant force of the pressure on a plane surface having an area A and submerged in a liquid can be determined from F sub R is equal to gamma H bar H A where H a bar H is the depth of the area's centroid C. Now, although for this uh, for book, it uses bar H. In our in my previous calculation, I have used H sub C. While I problema, you can use whatever. Uh, these are just variables. But what it stands for is what is important, and that is the depth of the area's centroid measured from the liquid's surface. So like I said, katong illustration, if our uh, structure is in ani and this is our free surface, money in mga centroid, one half, for example, for uh, uh, for structures plain nga rectangle or square, you have to add this measure Sa total depth. Okay. And then the resultant force acts through the center of pressure P determined from, for our X component, that is X sub P minus bar X, which I have used uh, X sub C, plus bar X sub uh, bar X, uh, bar I sub X, Y over Y sub, bar Y, that is Y sub C, and the Y, and for our y component of our the center of pressure is y sub c. This is y sub c. Y sub p is equal to y sub c plus bar i sub x over y sub c a. If the submerged area has an axis of symmetry along the y axis that passes through the centroid, then bar i sub x is equal to zero. And so, x sub p is equal to, which is equal to bar x, is equal to zero. Here, p is located on the centroidal axis of the area. Now, uh, we'll have a separate video, for example, one, 
example two and example three. 